uh, thank you for joining us tonight. This is my good friend, Kevin Rempel. He's uh, joining me tonight for a chat about his life and all the exciting stuff that he does. And we both play sledge hockey. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'm sure we will explain that to you in the grand scheme of this conversation. Now, we've only got half an hour, so I'm probably going to be flying pretty fast, but it's all good. Okay, so, uh, Kevin, do you want to say, tell your story very briefly, or shall I? Because you've done quite a lot. Well, I mean, yeah, like, this, we're ready to dive into it. You're, you're the interviewer, but... Um, Straight in I, there, buddy. I mean, I'm happy to do it for the audience, for sure. Go for it. Uh, you know, for everyone tuning in, thanks for hanging out for a bit. Uh, my name is Kevin Rempel. I, I'm known for uh, having played five years with Team Canada on the sledge hockey team, earning a bronze in Sochi and winning the 2013 Worlds with the guys. Um, but most people want to know my whole story, which is like why I got into sledge hockey in the, on the back end. And basically, I was paralyzed when I was 23 years old. I'm 36 years old now. And uh, got hurt on my motorcycle, crashed my bike, um, broke my back, pelvis, and ribs, and was an incomplete paraplegic and told I would likely never walk again. Fortunately, I didn't uh, sever my spinal cord. I fractured and dislocated it. So surgery and a little bit of luck and a lot of hard work, I was able to get better. Um, and the kicker in my so that was, that was great. That was got me back on the motorcycle. But the kicker is that my dad was also paralyzed four years earlier um, from a hunting accident where he fell out of a tree and broke his back, as a, leaving him as a complete paraplegic. And so... Um, my dad, unfortunately, dealt with a lot of depression and a gambling addiction. Mom left and dad took his own life. And that sent me into a spiral where I felt like doing the same. But um, it was because of sledge hockey was one of like the tipping points that I really was able to turn my life around and find a new purpose, find a common community of people going through the same struggles of living with a disability. And having lived it from both sides of the coin where like I have a family member or, or friend, aka, you know what I mean, someone with a disability to like, living with it myself. Um, it's given me a big perspective on life and sledge hockey has uh, just given me an incredible opportunity to travel the world, meet cool people like you, and um, today help grow the sport through the team building program, the sledge hockey experience. Yeah. You forgot to mention uh, speaking and stuff too, dude. Tell people <laughs> about your speaking. Yeah, so I do keynote speaking as a result of all of this. It was by fluke. I just got asked to do one talk and then they said, said you're apparently good enough at it. Do you want to do another? And I was like, okay. So I ended up doing that for the last 13 years. But um, today I speak on the hero mindset is my is my signature keynote. And what that is is about focusing on the small things that make the big difference because um, anything I've achieved was achieved through small baby steps. And what I've done, people, like I believe that each of us can or each of you can all achieve in your own way your podium or your dream. And yeah. Well, three things that really stand out um, about the hero mindset are hero moments, hero decisions, and hero actions. And every day in our lives, we have moments that we can turn into something great. But it's about recognizing what those moments are. And then when you recognize those moments, um, it's your decision that you make about those. For example, you may have a dream or a moment where you realize it's like, I know that this is something I want to pursue, whatever that goal might be. That's the moment. But the decision is, well, what am I going to do to get myself there? Um, and you can't change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction. You can choose a new path today. And then the hero actions are like, okay, now you know what just happened, what you want to do, um, and the direction you want to go. But now it's about actually taking action steps. And so to be the hero of your own movie, you need to actually step up in your life, accept responsibility, and do the hard thing. And yeah. so I want to help share my story and be an example that regardless of like the challenges and volume of obstacles that you have in front of you that you can still achieve great things. And it begins with you um, accepting responsibility, taking one step at a time, never giving up. And those are the hero moments, decisions, and actions that you can be, that you can adopt the hero mindset and be the hero of your own movie. Well, you've just answered that question nicely for later on. <laughs> okay. Um, if you don't mind, Kevin, I'm just going to say hi to everybody in the chat. And guys in the chat, if you wouldn't mind, would you share this out on Twitter for me? Because Kevin is a great bloke. And he has got an awesome story behind him. And we're going to get into this in just a second. So in the chat, we have who we got tonight. Uh, we've got Kay from Happy Trails Hiking. Inspired John, of course. Me. Oh, I'm there. Okay. Laurie Bryan. Who else is in? Mar Marty. My mate, Marty. You've got to say it in a Yorkshire accent, Kevin. Don't mind me. 
Uh, Comac, thank you for joining us. Very much appreciate. Story of Dory. Karen Summers, my lovely, of course. Who else is in? Carol's in from Happy Trails Hike. Uh, no, hike with me. Sorry, wrong person. Uh, Pusa Studios, thank you guys so much for earlier on and shouting me out. I appreciate it so much. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, guys, if you have any questions for Kevin uh, or me, please tag me in them because I'm trying to pay attention to 17 things at once and Kevin looks so professional and I'm like, <laughs> basically. Um, so, yeah, it's all good. Okay. Um, what else do I need to ask you? Okay, yeah, so that's good. Kevin, shall we stop laughing at me? Ladies, also, I need Susan in here. If you fancy a fancy, handsome Canadian with a beard, I'll, I'm, you know, pricing him off to the highest bidder. <laughs> I'm joking, Kevin. I'm joking. Joking. Um, okay. Shall we start with sledge hockey? Whatever you like. <laughs> now that you're completely freaked out. Um, no, I'm all good. It's, I, I'm <laughs> loving it because you're full of energy and um, this is your show. So, like, yeah, just roll with it. <laughs> Do you know what? I think that's that's me all around. That's exactly why I wanted to actually talk to you in person because I was like, well, what's Kevin got that maybe I've not quite got or what I've not figured out? And I'm sorry, I missed the wall in the chat as well. Hello, buddy. Nice to meet you and see you again and stuff. And my brain's not working. Anyway, sledge hockey. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> just roll with it, Kevin. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, both me and Kevin play sledge hockey, which is one of the greatest sports I've ever played. Now, I am able-bodied. Kevin, obviously, um, are you pretty much back to being nearly able-bodied? Wow, how are you at the minute? Was Yeah, like, if you saw me, you wouldn't know any different, yeah. but I yeah. live with an invisible disability because every day of my life, all day, every day, it still affects me. Yeah, I get you, buddy. Of, of course it does. My, I also had another friend. She played... Uh, just no, I, I always think it sounds weird when you say regular ice hockey in comparison to para because it's, yeah. yeah, it's still hockey. She actually got slammed into the board, she got checked really hard, she broke her neck also. I can't remember where, but basically, yeah, the implications of uh breaking any part of your spine and damaging the spinal cord are never a good because it affects blood pressure, it affects loads of stuff, doesn't it, Kevin? Yeah, a spinal cord injury is different but it's very similar to a brain injury in the sense that the smallest damage can cause such a different reaction for every person yeah. and how, yeah, like long lasting, I guess you could say that is, you know, um, neurolog cause like, it's just so much of it is neurological that, yeah. um, you know, my, I have muscle spasms and pins and needles and fatigue and there's the bowel and bladder issues that every spinal, yeah. all spinal cord people have to deal with. Um, but as a brain injury, yes, like just imagine like, having your cognitive function affected um, is so challenging day to day as well as like, yeah, just my digestion, for example, it's like, I have to be super yeah. conscious about what I eat. So. Yeah. I, do you know what? I have a, I have a regular conversation with uh, Dave, the captain of our ice hockey, sledge hockey team. Um, and uh, he's paralyzed from sort of like the diaphragm down. He was in a bike accident, um, hit a car and he's been in a wheelchair ever since. And yeah, he's, you know, he tells me lots of uh, stories about this. So you can imagine how much of a challenge it is, first of all, with a disability or being paralysed, to then think, well, can I get back into sport? Which I'll nicely tailor back into sledge hockey, Kevin. Did you see how I did that there? <laughs> okay, right. What would so, you like to with about sledge hockey? Say again. Well, what kind of things are you are on your mind about sledge hockey or what's anybody else is kind of wondering about? Um, guys in the chat, if you have any questions about sledge hockey, that is a great idea. Um, and also... Well, I've actually watched, Kevin's done a bunch of videos on it as well. This is totally going to go off on a tangent, this Kevin. Uh, I've watched like loads of videos that you've made. So Kevin does the sledge hockey experience in, uh, is it in Toronto or do you move around? Yep, Toronto. Toronto. So basically what Kevin does is you'll take a bunch of sledges and shirts and equipment and stuff and you get people into sledge hockey much like the Sheffield Steel Kings do, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I watched what the Sheffield Steel Kings are doing and as like I see them very active. I'm not sure about what the programs are running there, but um, what we do here is focusing on bringing the able-bodied people onto the ice and helping grow the sport through them versus targeting disabled people, people with disabilities. Um, so that's the consensus of the program is I created this corporate program to try and build a life after sport. And yeah, it's going awesome. It is, but I've seen I've seen you put loads of videos out and stuff. So yeah, check out the sledge hockey experience. All Kevin's links, by the way, are in the description below. I hope they're all working and stuff. If not, I'll check them afterwards. But yeah, they should be working. So obviously, um, was it just the paralysis that got you into sledge, or um, 
you know, like basically how how has Sledge helped you to get from where you were when you were paralyzed to where you are now? So, I mean, what I say, share with everyone is that like, as many of us who do play sledge hockey know is that there's an awesome community there. Yes. So, you know, first I didn't know that Paralympic sport really existed when I got injured and this is back in 2006, so it's grown. Um, but all I knew is wheelchair racing. So um, I volunteered at wheelchair basketball and then I met someone there that told me about sledge hockey and I played hockey as a kid. So it was an easier transition than learning basketball from scratch. And once I got in, I knew I loved it. Then I found a YouTube video from Team Canada and winning gold in 06 in Torino. That was when my Team Canada dream was born. And yeah, so I mean, I started grinding away and it took two years, made the team, um, which again, like I said, just was an awesome ride. But, you know, when we think about what sledge hockey can do for so many people is like the community is like the number one thing that I really think about that um, you just you meet other people that are kind of fucked up like you and obviously feel like you're not alone and start to understand things. What are you trying to say about me, Kevin? You said you're still left up. <laughs> but, um, Go on, buddy, carry on. Yeah, it's, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's great for the parents as well because it's not just the people with a disability that are affected. It's, it's the caregivers, it's the brothers, the sisters, the aunts, the uncles. It's all of those people in that same circle and to see them for each of those people to watch someone that they care about thrive in an environment and to, you know, be competitive and feel yes. competitive. Like there's so many benefits about um, sledge and what Paralympic sport can do for people. Even if you're just playing at a B or a C level, it's like, you're still out there competing to your best ability with people on a similar level. And um, it gave me a life after my accident and it gave me something to look forward to and to get up out of bed and for people who live with a disability, it's, you know, really important to stay active. So yeah. I think that's what what's so remarkable about our sport and about Paralympic sport. Totally, buddy. Totally, totally agree with you. I've just to jump in on my terms there as well. I've met so many people with disabilities that have taught me so much more about myself now that I didn't know, um, like spine bifida, uh, amputees, um, cerebral palsy, various other conditions, and. It's incredible to see when somebody's either hobbling with a bag on the back and they're just hobbling to the changing room. You get them out on the, out on the ice and they're like, you know, they're flying. They are flying. And I, I love that so much. Yeah. So, okay, last question on Sledge because we're going to move on. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more? Because I know, Mr. Rempel, a few of the Canadian ladies team, and if any of the Canadian ladies team are watching tonight, uh, hello and thank you for joining us. Um how I know that you've helped out a few people like um, in the Canadian women's team. So do you want to talk a little bit about um, the areas that maybe you've pushed into to encourage more people into it or? Uh, I think, I think you're alluding to some of the fundraising maybe. Like, a little. I mean, yeah. I, I can touch on it in a few different ways, you know, um, I, well, on that, I think the first thing that comes to mind is, um, you know, we've done some fundraising, for the last couple of years because i knew as soon as i started a for-profit business that i wanted to give back as well so part of my personal mandate and mandate of the business was to like raise money and buy sleds for kids and families that can't afford them so to date we've uh, donated 22 sleds we've raised 32 wait nice i uh, just no wait, we'd, we're over 30 we've done 30 or 32 thousand Nice. Well, they're not really cheap, cheap either, are they? They're not cheap. Like for people in the in the chat, they are not cheap sleds. Well, we, yeah. I mean, it's local here for the manufacturer, but sleds and sticks are about seven hundred, three hundred dollars for hockey gear. So a thousand bucks, we say, puts a kid in a sled with the gear. Um, so that's been one thing, and I know that um, Rachel Bolger was one of our first recipients, yes. and she got a goalie sled, and she was a part of. Um, she's been a part of Team Canada for the women's team for sometime and um she was, awesome. she was awesome buddy she's a great character yeah um There's yeah a question for you as well in a minute <laughs> i just you know we want the sport to grow and i think the women's side has uh remarkable women already involved i think that there's Dude, a they are truly professional those guys they are they are at the peak of their game if if anybody needs funding from the actual team canada the canadian women's sledge team are so damn professional Team Canada, please, please help them out. Sorry, well, Kevin. <laughs> you know, 
they're yeah they're fantastically they're fantastic people all of them and they're representing the you know hockey canada program and um the sport and women's sledge um so exceptionally well like i just know you know christina's a remarkable leader um helping guide the way and when you're asking about just like maybe some work that i we've had together like um christina i got to see her like join the sport back when i was playing with the niagara thunderblades and um, nice. it's crazy because I remember Christina being timid on the ice and she like completely holds herself with the men <laughs> right now, which is so sick. They're all like, animals. She's Absolute the beast animals. out there. Like it's so great because <laughs> like she really can school some men, which is so great. Um, so that's <laughs> awesome. And like, you know, Claire Buchanan has been a big part of, um, well, all, of so. our events and like, she's yeah. a, such an awesome representative and awesome person. Yeah. Um, you she's know, very highly of you too, buddy. Yeah. I just, I really appreciate her, uh, her involvement and, but it, it's not definitely not just one of the women. It's like, you know, Christina's, you know, a front line in some ways. Claire's got my, she's a, a massive part of the program we, that yeah. I run like for the corporate, you know, I think about um, Nandini as well as like someone I'm kind of close with that, uh, you know, they're just, they all got their own little niche about how they kind of help grow the sport. I think, when I think about Nandini, we always laugh because she's just like such a comical character. <laughs> if she's watching that right, watching this right now, she's probably going to like comical character. What are you talking about? I'm going to send them the replay. <laughs> I think all right. Good. I'm like, I'll totally say, say that again, Nandini. You're a comical character. But. <laughs> all right. Can I interrupt you, buddy? And we've got a few questions from the uh, from the chat, and also we need to move on to like your other stuff as well because I need to introduce your book and stuff, dude. Sure. Is that all right? Okay. So Pusa Studios has asked, "Is Kevin going to Beijing 2020? And if not, why not, Kevin?" Well, I'm retired now, so um, I hope to attend the Winter Games. Like Beijing would, um, sorry, Beijing would be 2022. Um, Tokyo is in 2020, so the Tokyo cool. Games our summer games. I do hope to attend the 2022 games in some kind of a media capacity again, like the, the stuff that I've been putting out there so far with, with uh, sledge content has literally just been me tasting the market. If you will, it's like I put, I know I want to just put out content and see what would grab. Cause I think I just, I know in my mind what would grab, but I wanted to execute. So anyway, I'm going to continue to build social content. I've got a lot up my sleeve that people don't know yet. Uh, uh, you do you do a lot of good jobs on uh, Facebook as well. So let me just put this one into here. Uh, yeah, Kevin does a lot of uh, mo motivational speaking on Facebook as well. I've seen the dude actually crying when he's been talking. And I remember your speech about uh, Humboldt Strong. And dude, I was so impressed with that. So if anybody in the chat doesn't know what Humboldt Strong is, the Humboldt team was uh, on a coach. I can't remember exactly when it wasn't long, that long ago, but basically uh, the coach collided with a truck, I believe it was. And a lot of people died, um, and I think only like even only a few of them actually um, survived very well. And then there was a, quite a lot of really nasty injuries. So this is again where me and Kevin, the community, comes together for each other. So yeah, um, yeah, I won't touch on that too much per se right now. But just um, you know, I think that's an example of like the community thing where it's like whether you know each disability has their own community, you know, an amputee would understand an amputee better, yeah. you know, um, CP, CP. And it's like, so in this case, like one of the players from the accident, Ryan Strasnitsky yeah. had a spinal cord injury. And so that was just, I wanted to connect on, um, to be available as a peer support for someone living with a spinal cord injury. And, um, I forget what it was you said before that, the kind of like, Oh, it's talking about videos and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like, um, when I started in the sport, I started, you know, back in 2008 and there was no content online about how to play sledge hockey. And so when I was at the end of 2015, I'm like, okay, it's been like seven, eight years and there's still no content. So I was like, yeah. I want to be that guy because I love making content. I made my own dirt bike motocross videos before. So it's not a chore. It's, it's easy. I just have to find time to do it. Um, but yeah, it's like I'd say there's still a gap in the market right now as well. There's still quite a few gaps in sledge equipment could be better and stuff specifically um, for sledge. I it's, not, it's just got a long way to go. Um, uh, yeah. Don't forget Andrew's question. I see it there as well, but the UK. But do I'm it. Gonna, yeah, I was. I'm gonna go sorry, I was going to. Yeah, I, I was going to let you let you carry on and then do it. Okay, so 
Andrew, ironically, Mr. Mead is the guy that I was talking about earlier. He's the double amputee on my um, para ice hockey team. So, Mr. Mead, can you please subscribe to my channel and Kevin's while you're at it? Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, are you ever coming to the UK? Because we need to get you for the I, stage. I, you know? I, I know. I, I've wanted to ever since I started getting messages. But I, I want to go to UK. Like, when I started putting out the instructional sledge hockey videos, uh, it was uh, UK, Switzerland, Sweden, Australia. Germany have all sent me messages. So it's like, I want to come visit all of you. Um, do it, man. Do it. I've got, I've got dreams of doing like a sledge hockey tour, to be honest with you. Like, I don't have any, I'm not shy about sharing that one. It's like, I'd like to go with my, with my buddy, Chris Dukowitz and, and travel to like three or four different countries and like just oh, drop man. in and coach sledge hockey and couch surf. So but it's in the works, so it's, but it's realistically, it wouldn't probably happen until, um, like the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022 before those games happen. Well, buddy, you know, you're always welcome um, at the Sheffield Steel Kings. I'm just going to, because Jake asked me to really nicely. So, uh, yeah, no. there we go, chaps. Where's my, where's my finger? You can't see it. There we go. <laughs> right. yeah. shout, out to, shout out to the Sheffield Steel Kings and Jake and Dave and Jake. Thanks for the sick jersey. I've still got it. I just didn't have time to run to the hockey arena to pick it up. And when I think about it, again, going back to videos, it's like I've collected a bunch of these awesome jerseys. Um, and I have plans too. It's just time, but it's just like I want to do, you know, different instructional videos wearing and repping each of those jerseys as a thanks. So it's coming. Like I appreciate all the messages. People, have, you know, DM me. It's like, how does, can you make a shooting video? I get that like every, every fucking day. <laughs> um, so I know people want it, but the one that made wasn't good enough. It was, it just was not a good representation of what I wanted to communicate. But um, like, there's, I hope that other people do what I do. Um, like we'll James trying really hard to own videos. Yeah. Um, I just know like what my master plan is over like several years because it's like people see it. It's like, oh, can you make this video or how about that? But it's like I I filmed a back bank of content. Mm -hmm. And then you roll it out, and it's like until you film another batch, there's no more content. Like it takes a lot to film it, edit it, yeah. you know, schedule it, write the description. So, um, just basically the behind the scenes is like learning from those experiences. It's like now I'm gonna try and produce not 30 clips, but how can I get a hundred sledge hockey clips ready to go before I roll it out, so that I'm not getting backed up again. Yeah, I have tons of footage of me playing badly. If that helps, this is how not to do it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Okay, very quickly, um, let me just answer Susan's question. Is Kevin joining us at Tim Horton's Coffee when we're in Canada next month? I think we shall try, I Susan. So. I shall try my hardest. Yeah. Um, he's got it in the diary, so forget him. Okay. Oh, my God, this chat's gone for miles, and I've not been paying attention. Okay. Let's move on. Questions. Is there any other questions there? Uh, let's have a look. Better say hi to everybody else. Hi, uh, Eric. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's have a little look. Ever the professional, Mr. Rample. Way more professional than me. I'm trying, though, buddy. I'm trying. Um, okay. I guess this one's a nice one from Karen. I guess it's harder to have an invisible disability. Is it not, Kevin Rample, as people can't see it? Um, so that's a, that's a killer question. Mm. Um, my personal opinion on it is it is difficult it can be difficult living with an invisible disability, but um, I don't think that, for example, like, how about this? My question would be what, what's, so Karen, what do you find difficult? Or I'm imagining that you have an invisible disability, but like, what is difficult about it? Because, you know, I've been lucky, I've worked my butt off and I've been mm -hmm. lucky enough that I made a good recovery that, I don't think that my disability affects me. Um, how would I say it? It doesn't affect my day-to-day -day life, even though it affects my day-to-day -day life. Like I can, I'll still go out and do everything I plan to do. And if, if there were difficulty associated with it, it would be my view on how it's difficult, whether it's invisible or not, because I could be in a wheelchair completely visible and not view it as difficult at all based on my attitude and my mindset. And that's where, I really try and tie things back to the keynote is that, you know, whether you have a disability or not, whether you have an invisible disability or not, or not, whether you're missing a leg or CP or spinal cord, or maybe a TBI, like a traumatic brain injury, it's like, 
if you have enough of cognitive function that you can understand that you are responsible for your own life, you are responsible for your attitude, and you may not be responsible for what happens to you, but you're always responsible for what you do about it. Yeah. Like if you can understand that, that will completely change and shape the entire rest of your life. Um, you know, I want to be the voice to stand up for some people with disabilities or against some people with disabilities to say it's like there's able-bodied people with disabilities both who choose a victim yeah. mentality. You know, you got the people in a wheelchair or people that are quadriplegics that are in a power chair and they're happy as fuck. And it's like, what's the difference between them and the and the fucking banker downtown or, you know, the people, yeah. the teenager that works at the pizza place that lives in a fucking wealthy home yeah. and has, you know, privilege and they don't view their life as, as it's great. So it's like, I want to, I'm trying to like, not just go into a random curse a whole lot. Here. <laughs> but it's like, that's what it's about so much is that, you know, when we play, have people come out and play sled hockey, like my buddy, Chris Dukowitz is the example. He's the epitome that I look up to where he lives full time in a wheelchair and he's a landscaper. Like he fucking builds ponds. He like digs ditches. He, he does six truckloads of dirt in the back of his pickup truck, shoveling in his hands within his wheelchair. Yeah. And it's like, Dude. what's the difference between Chris and somebody else that's got it made? Whether you have legs or don't have legs, it's like, it's your mindset. It's your attitude. It's how you yeah. view your life with the challenges, challenges that you live with. And so to the question going back to like, is it difficult living with an invisible dis disability or not? It's like, I think it's just what you make of it. I think yeah. whatever the, the situation or the cards you've been dealt, it's like your mindset, your attitude is what's going to determine whether it's difficult or not. Well, well freaking said, buddy. Well freaking said. Like I said as well, totally agree with you. Um, disabled people from playing paradise hockey have taught me so much more about myself. You know, so, right. We've only got a few minutes left, so we well, better... Here's, I, I, here's I, the one question real quick. What did they right. teach you? People with disabilities taught you something... They taught me that. patience. They taught me patience. They taught me to have a more open mind. They taught me that they don't always need help. They may appear to need help. You may want to help them. They don't always want when well, they don't always want that help. That's the wrong way to say it. They don't need it. They, they sometimes go, oh, I'm cool. I got this. It's cool. And I think that's a wonderful thing because it opens up communication with people. So much more. Exactly. Um, there we go. Ben's my good good friend Ben's just popped in. There we go. Yeah, buddy. Mindset is mindset's the key, man. Yeah. Like you can't none of this none of this stuff that you want to happen is is really gonna happen the way you want it to until you get your head right. Yeah. It's like Definitely. before you get to the gym, you need to have your head right that tells you I'm gonna go to the gym. You know, before you get the job that you want. You got to have a head right that I deserve this job and I'm going to put together the application. I'm going to keep trying and prep for the interview. You know, you want to lose some weight. It's like, well, you got to get your head right to say that it's worth putting in the effort to lose some weight. You want to leave a relationship because you're stuck in it. You got to convince yourself in your fucking head first that it's worth leaving. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave despite how comfortable this relationship is. It's like, you got to get your head right first and then you can follow through. See, this is why I knew I needed to talk to you. <laughs> yes, Kevin, right. I'm going to jump on this one because we've only got a few minutes left. So, guys in the chat, this is Kevin's book. Let me just get that a little closer so you can see it. Still standing. It's pretty cool. Okay. That's on the other side of the world. Yep. Uh, there you go. And also, I'm going to show them, Kevin. I'm going to show them what you put. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to... You guys read that? Hang on a second. Let me get on the screen right. I can't see. A simple... Um, Keywords yeah. being, shouldn't you be checking out like nice Canadian guys? <laughs> yes, Kevin. Yes, I should. Uh, anyway, moving on. So, guys, uh, very quickly, shall we have a little quick uh, chat about? I want to know, buddy. Let me ask the you... audience, like, who's in the chat room right now? Like, how many? Like, give away, yep. give a what up if you're a sledge player? Like, how many sledge players have we got in the uh, chat room right now? How many sledge players? We definitely had one. Um. I think a lot of them will be watching, but they won't be commenting. So, but I'll check out on the Steel Kings later on, and I'm gonna also going to give Team Canada a shout too. Um, read it out. <laughs> Andrew wants me to read it out. All right, I'll read it out. Kevin's got to go, guys. I'm trying to get as much in as I can. <laughs> so they call me Goose on the Steel Kings team, right? So it goes, hey, Goose, 
I hear you fancy another boy over there, eh? Apparently at the time I did. I can't remember exactly why, but Jake told Kevin, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, shouldn't you be chasing Canadians? Smiley face. Uh, this is so bad. He, 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 he. Uh, looking forward to meeting you soon. Keep up the great work, Remps. <laughs> there you go. Are you happy now, Ooh. Mr. Mead? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Merle is, is one what? Oh, Merle is a player. Is she watching, Andrew? Let us know. I don't know if she's watching. So we have two sledge players in, which is great. And they are oh. the best thing about it, they've just only just joined the Steel Kings. And oh my god, the enthusiasm, they love it. And it's incredible to have people that have that enthusiasm because it puts it back into you, like I was ranting about, you know, people yeah. teaching you stuff about yourself. No, <laughs> I love I love the Instagram. They're you guys are doing uh, such an awesome job about promoting it all and uh it's growing on like just the sport is growing on social but um, it's cool seeing all of the work that that uh steel kings are doing yeah this is the this is the thing i think between you and the steel kings we could really really you know amp it up a little bit more which would be absolutely fantastic okay so i've totally missed half of my millions of questions but kevin my main question for you buddy is i want to know how you have got from breaking your back your dad committing suicide to rebuilding, to rewalking, to re getting exactly like you said earlier on, getting your mind back into a place where you can like physically function in yourself. And how, dude, how do you do that? Like, there's got to be. It's the mindset. Like, yeah. I'll try and break it down further to you, but I'm not just trying to like avoid the question or take an easy way out. But no, no. that's the answer. Like, when I, I get hired to speak to share that story, how did you do this? It's like, um, Originally, I didn't have the, uh, I don't know, did I cover the moments, decisions, and actions already? I think I did, didn't I? Yes. You yeah. Did. yeah, you did. When those, when I created my presentation originally, it, it was not MDAs. It was accept responsibility one step at a time and never give up. And those are the three steps. When I, I, I wrote an ebook, The Ten Commandments of Resiliency, but it's like those are the top three that stand out. It's like when you look at getting out of depression, making a hockey team, starting a business, you know, learning to walk again, it begins with accepting responsibility, which is that moment when you recognize that my life's not where I want it to be and something needs to change. So when you recognize that, that's when you need to accept responsibility. Next is the decision. It's like when you decide you want to be somewhere else, how are you going to get there? Like for me to learn how to walk, it was six weeks with no results until I wiggled one toe and I had yeah, no I for a week until I wiggled another toe. Awesome. And so then an ankle, then an ankle, standing, gravity, steps, walker, wheelchair, in a year walking three to four to get on my feet like I can today. But, you know, whether it's learning to walk again or make Team Canada, if you're learning how to play sled hockey, it's fall down, get up, fall down, get up. You're not even worrying about shooting or passing or moving with the puck because you can't even figure out how to hold two sticks with it in the proper position. But you figure out that, okay, well, now I can learn how to maybe move with the puck. All right, step number two. Well, now yeah. that you do that, turn with the puck. Step number three. Like, so moments, like, recognize the moments where you get to accept responsibility. Now make a decision, a hero decision about taking things one step at a time. And the hero action steps is about taking steps over and over and over again until you get what you want, until you get the result. And that's the attitude of persistence. That's how you develop resilience through failure. If you don't have resistance against you, you're not going to develop resilience. And, you know, some phrases that keep me going, is, for example, are feel the fear and do it anyway. And if there, and I read the other day in one of my books, it's like, if there is no fear, there is no courage. If there, if there's no fear, then it's easy. It doesn't require courage. But when you're trying to achieve something that instills a level of fear inside of you, it's going to require that you act with courage and acting with courage is acting in spite of fear. And so that's the hero action is acting in spite of fear. So, you know, to answer your question of like, how have I done these things? All of these things require the same principles, which were moments, decisions, and actions, hero moments, decisions, and actions that were where I accepted responsibility for my life. I took things one step at a time. And I kept moving forward and I kept trying and never chose to never give up. Yes, Kevin. Yes. <laughs> this is why I so this guys, this is why I had to bring him onto the channel because I knew 
he would be so good. Uh, if you want to check out the hero mindset, if you check out uh, kevinremple.com. Yeah, just kevinremple.com. A bunch of blogs and just at Kevin Remple on all social media. He's he's on there. And um, yeah, this is exactly why I wanted to get the guy on. Right, Kevin, are you all right for two more minutes? Yep. Okay, buddy, I just want to check. Um, okay. Um, all right, so. Ooh, okay. Let's combine two sort of questions here. How do you want to help people in the future? And what are your own plans for the future? My life revolves around promoting sledge hockey. It's, um, you know, getting as many people in sleds as we can. And I'm also trying to like grow a legitimate business because there's a lot of like organizations that do incredible work around sledge hockey, but I want to be an example for other athletes to see what, kind of a career they could develop when they retire through after sport. Dude, you know, you're like, an example. Yeah. It's just like, there's so many athletes who are awesome people and you know, the transferable skill sets from high performance sport to business are like insanely like parallel. They just make sense. There's so much that applies, but it's just like, personally, I just didn't want to just take to me, that was the easy route. And I didn't, and I just knew that I had something in me. So you know, growing the sport through participation and getting more numbers, like getting more people involved is one thing. Um, but I really want to like just continue to be an example of like what's possible if, if you take the same drive that you took to pursue sport and apply that to business, but to your own version of business. So it doesn't mean you have to create a business out of your sport, but in entrepreneurship, for example, it's like, you know, if you got to speak in front of people to sell yourself or sell your idea and get buy-in because if you're raising money to compete and train you could do the same thing to raise money for your product or your idea or service um i think that those would be two examples and i want to continue to give back to it's the fundraising side about like not just getting more people to play but like like i said it, it feels so good to like buy a sled for a kid and like see not just the kid's life change but the parents it's like we've had parents that are like we can't afford a sled and now all of a sudden, you know, our child can, you know, stay on the ice longer without their legs going numb or shoot the puck better because they're in a better position or play yeah. with no pain. Like those, it's, I'm lost for words when I think about that. Do you know what? I totally, totally agree with you because just again, from the things that I've seen, the people that I've started and they were terrible, much like myself. I'm still pretty terrible now, but I can turn a corner now, so I'm happy. Um, but exactly that, like it, in the chat tonight. So uh, as you can see on the screen there, Kay's put uh, the sledge hockey experience. This is what I like about the YouTube community. This is why I wanted to introduce you to them and them to you sort of thing, because exactly that. There you go. Uh, so John's just uh, when it's moved. These people immediately go and hunt you down, find out who you are, and they, they want to know about you. So exactly, dude. This is why I wanted to bring uh, everybody to as many people. Thanks to those who are sharing the links here and stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, right. Is there anything else? Kevin, uh, let me have a little just thingy because obviously I don't want to tie up any more of your time. I don't know. Like one one final thing I just <laughs> like to your audience and to everybody who's tuning in today. Like, thanks so much for hanging out with uh Rach and I. And um but like, I try my I've my whole life in the last decade, especially with social media. Like I've tried so damn hard to respond to everybody. I sometimes miss a couple, but um, you just like if you have any questions or want to ask about sledge or I've had people DM me about all kinds of things, depression and family issues to just like yo what up. Um, Instagram today is currently like the best to message on that I'm most responsive or like on that platform the most, but Facebook's a great, good one as well. And if you just like looking for some inspiration about like any ideas about mindset too, like just kevinremple.com slash blog. Um, I've been most consistent in the last few months, actually um, publishing weekly there. And there's a newsletter stuff you can sign up where I put, put that article out every week. So that will be some of the best places to go to get some more resources and inspiration. Awesome. I highly recommend following him, guys. Uh, truly, definitely is one of the people that I've... Um, what's the words I'm looking for? I found him very interesting. I found his life story very interesting. And exactly like when Kevin's got from broken back to entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and he's doing... Would you say you're completely living your life the way you want to now? Yep. Or, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. 
Sounds good to me. That's, that's where I want to be at. That's what I'm talking about. I'll tell you this: is that like living life on your terms is one of the greatest things ever. I'm ecstatic that I get to do it. It's also one of the hardest things ever because, at least in entrepreneurship, right? It's like you're free to make your own decisions, but you have to make all the decisions, and you have to keep you have obligations that you can't otherwise disregard. Um, but I would not trade it. I think that um, the ability to have the freedom to to live your life on your terms is far outweighs the safety and security of a paycheck for me personally. And I've, and I've, I'll leave it at that, but it's just to each her on. You gotta, you gotta figure out what, what's right for you. You said every word that I needed to hear right there. That was epic. That was, <laughs> that's exactly how my brain is. I would say I'm sort of like, just sort of like getting into the, past the novice into the intermediate stage of where I want to be at, where I'm trying to get myself to go and stuff. There's still a hell of a lot of work, uh, but, exactly that is the mind fault for me as well is it's one life guys you, you get one life and you know my brain is telling me overwhelmingly to try and do everything that i want to do in life not to do some bs job that depresses me puts me on tablets etc etc yeah so <laughs> well, i always say about that like well tablets i mean if you're talking about computers i'm like i live on my computer nowadays because that's where our world being built <laughs> But it's like, the one thing I would say is that as far as like following your heart sort of thing, like it's all cliche stuff, but it's like someone said before Charlie on Instagram, he's like the truth of life hides behind cliches because they're true for a reason. But it's like with following your heart, you know, um, what I've experienced anyway is that when you, if you follow your heart, you may not know where it's going to lead and it might not lead you where you think it's going to lead but that's going to lead you to another place where you have to make another decision about what's right for you. And when I think about, for example, you know, I pursued my bike dream, but I broke my back. I pursued sledge hockey, but I got cut, you know, um, I started a business and it's been challenging. It's like what's guided me and kept me going through all of these days is that I followed my heart and my gut, and my intuition. And it has, it's been far from me. It's, it's so not easy. It's been arguably one of the hardest roads that, you look at people would ever have thought about pursuing. If you knew how hard it was before you would start, you would never start. Not on yeah. a path like this. Nobody wants to go through the shit that I've been through. But Dude, that's would, why this is here. That's why this is here. Yeah, but it's like I would never, ever trade it. It's like that's brought some of like the best highs in my life. You know, breaking my back led me to sledge. Like getting cut started me on the path to build my business sooner than I had to – because I was chicken shit to go do it. I wasn't total chicken shit, but like – I knew I should have done it a year earlier and I didn't. And I get you. I get you. Like you, you just, that's where the whole following your heart thing really falls into play is like, to me, that's my North star is like, that will guide me. And as long as I keep moving towards that light or that direction, then the path's going to vary, but the vision always stays the same. Yeah. Do you know, I think the most favorite image of you is not the sledge. It's where you got back on the damn bike afterwards and you're there and you're like, yes. Yeah. That's my favorite image of you. Thanks for okay. to uh, Susan and um, I forget if it was John. I saw that you yes. were the logo or something. John, say again. <laughs> the most recent comment. Uh, we miss Susan? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, John, what did you say? Or Susan, what did you just say? Put it back in the thing. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, we got that one. <clears throat> there you go. Yeah, that's that's yeah, so I just want to say shout out, John, Susan. Thank you to everybody else who's left a couple comments and tuned in today as well. Oh, hang on a minute. Just one last question, I believe. Come, oh, guys, you're moving my chat. <laughs> okay. Yes, I do. I'll answer that right away. Yes, I do believe everything happens for a reason. I think it's what you make of it too. Like, I think if it happens to you and you just, like I said, fall up, fall victim to the, to the situation or circumstances, you'll find a reason that it was supposed to meant to be bad. But it's like, um, you know, Tony, Tony Robbins who said he's like, life is not happening. Uh, to you happen life is happening for you, for you. i yeah. think it's like the best example of like it's how you view the situation and i do believe the life is always steering us into a different direction good and the bad especially the bad so it's what you make of it, it totally is buddy it totally is damn boy you are good <laughs> ah, i feel hyped up right now i'm right guys in the chat I don't know if Kevin's willing to do it, but would you like Kevin to come back for another chat? Maybe not soon. Maybe whenever Kevin's got a spare tiny second of, because this guy is as busy as hell all the time. Oh, yeah. so I'm so grateful. When, it, when the time, when we, when we need to, we will do it again. Yes. 
excellent. And I better let you go because uh, we've already had 15 minutes extra out of him. He's going to be like, you know, charging me. Okay. 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 Um, so, guys, do me a favor, everybody in the chat. Uh, let me know if you want to see Kevin again. Ask any last questions right now, very quickly. Yes, come back. There you go. Boom. Um, thank you so much, guys, in the chat. And if do me a favor. That's it. Um, okay. Last things. Blah, 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 brain, come on, work. Uh, guys. Share Kevin out for me. I'm sure he would hella appreciate it. Um, any help for him in sledge hockey in his career also comes directly back to all of us as well. Because, like I said, the guy's got a brain like, you know, is this passion right there. There is passion right there. Just like there is in me. It's just not quite as um, well-worded as Kevin just yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Experience. Okay, um, and thank you everybody in the chat. And I believe that the Crohn's Chicks, Crohn's Chicks Live has already started, so I'm sorry for keeping people away from that. So if you want to go check that out afterwards, that'd be amazing. Kevin, you absolute little legend, buddy. Are we gonna get that? We're gonna get a pint in uh, Toronto then. We're gonna hang. So just shoot me. I got it. You're in my calendar. Let's do it. All right, buddy. I will give you a shout soon. I'll get there. Guys in the chat, thank you so much. I appreciate all your time and effort in watching us, Kevin. You freaking superstar. I love you, buddy. You're Thanks absolutely amazing. Everybody. All right, well, shall see you. All right, guys. I will see you all later, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, hang on a minute. Oh, there we go. All right.